Hey everyone, I'm Gotham Chopra, and this is Holy Facts, the show where we take you on a tour of the weirder side of religion and spirituality, from Jedi priests to the Illuminati. On this episode, we're taking a closer look at the spiritual side of giving birth. And although passing a seven pound baby through your body, all the while screaming at your loving and devoted husband Gotham that you did this to me, doesn't seem all that spiritual to me, many people around the world believe it is. So sit back, relax, and let us know if you need any ice chips and stop yelling at me, honey. Historically speaking, childbirth and religion have always had a close working relationship. From ancient tribal fertility rituals to the Christian belief that God punished Eve for eating the forbidden fruit by cursing women with painful childbirth. And sorry ladies, but it seems like no amount of talking and praying to the man upstairs is going to make him change his mind on that score. But despite the pain, people around the world still venerate fertility and childbirth. In the Philippines, participants in the annual Obando fertility rites still dance in the hopes that the spirit of life will enter the wombs of childless women. And in England, a figure carved into the hillside called the Cern Abbas Giant, which dates back to the 1600s, is said to have magical properties. Childless couples dance around the figure, and having sex atop it was said to cure infertility, which beats the popular American fertility cure of a bottle of red wine and a night in a moderately priced hotel. In Tamil Nadu in India, mothers-to-be participate in the Valai Kapu or bangle protection ceremony during which the women place colorful bangles on the pregnant woman's wrists to ward off evil spirits. No word on whether the bracelets also ward off stretch marks and morning sickness. During childbirth, some women choose to let their bodies move to the music. Many believe that belly dancing originated as a Mesopotamian method of easing the pain of childbirth practice known as the birth magic ritual. It's also making a comeback with Western moms-to-be as a means of aiding with flexibility, strength, and breathing during pregnancy and labor. No offense, but belly dancing just skyrocketed to the top of my list of least sexy activities. Once the baby is born, Muslims believe that the adhan, or call to prayer, should be the first words a child hears. So the call is whispered in the baby's right ear, usually by his or her father. It isn't until after the first few days at home that the father begins whispering instead, please sleep through the night. In Egypt, new parents practice a ritual called El Sabua on the seventh day of their baby's life. Egyptians believe that babies are born gender neutral and the Sabua marks the point at which gender is defined and the baby's sex is publicly announced. It's not just a centuries old Egyptian custom, it's also a clever way to make sure you don't get a bunch of annoying bubblegum pink onesies if you're having a girl. After the birth, Hawaiians plant the placenta in a religious ceremony as a means of binding the child to his or her homeland. Although it's probably a lot easier for a kid to feel connected to his home when that homeland is the most beautiful paradise on planet Earth. When the placenta is planted with a tree, the tree is believed to provide insight into the child's well-being. Healthy tree, healthy child. As a parent, I can say that there's nothing more spiritual than having a kid. But it's not just having it, which of course I can't speak to as a man, it's raising it and witnessing a baby's consciousness expanding and seeing the universe slowly imprinting itself on your child that is truly a profound spiritual journey. And an exhausting one. I'm rambling, but you get the point, right? Was your child's birth a spiritual event? Let us know in the comment section below or by uploading a video response.